I have indeed arrived to the Golden Mountain, the Golden Mount, Wat Saket here in Bangkok, and it it's a buzzing with people. In particular, there's a lot of Burmese here. We've got the stickers, badges on with the Myanmar flag and traditional kind of Burmese outfits. I'm not entirely sure why, but it just adds to the flavor and the color of the place. As you can hear, there's the glanging gongs in the background as well. So here's a map. Here's one Rachana down. So we've just walked along Padong Krom Prasem and we are now, you are here, we're about to go up, so we're going to walk around and around until we get to the top, that's the plan. Now at the base there's actually a lot of uh, graves here and then it's really quite striking uh, how they've been kind of Put into the base of this this mountain. Uh, I'll sketch some footage for you, but they're really interesting at the base here. Yeah, loads and loads of uh, graves, and they're really kind of embedded within nature here. There's no straight lines at all, so it's all curvy. And even the concrete in here is just kind of being slapped on and made to look a bit like nature-y with a kind of a rippled effect. Really quite eerie as well, particularly with the, the gang, uh, 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 jangling gongs in the background. So the gold leaf here, you can, uh, for a small donation, you could make, uh, purchase a gold leaf write your prayer, your wishes for your loved ones and hang it on as a prayer and a hope. Okay, so another one of the themes of today is about King Rama 3. So we've got King Rama 1, King Rama 2 and then King Rama 3 and you can see What the temple or the chetty was like before he did all of his renovations so he has actually added a lot to this area here It's an unusual kind of experience at the top of what Saket. Uh, I can't say I feel very spiritual here. Um, I'll tell you why it is, uh, mostly because it's probably a, 
like a, just a tourist tourist stop for many people. So they're just here to take a few photographs um, or just to hang out. Take, there are more people looking outside, looking at the view rather than the chetty. But there's a couple of people who are actually here for some kind of a spiritual quest. And I can't help it. It's not a real feeling of uh, you know, meditation or, or spirituality here. Um, I'll just give you one more example. There's a dude who was just sitting down he was watching TikTok on his phone, had volume absolutely maximum. That just kind of ruined the uh, spiritual nature of this place. Uh, so you are, if you're after spiritual enlightenment, don't come to Watsaket. But if you want a really good view of the city, um, and it actually is a pretty impressive structure because this whole thing is man-made. Now I'm going to find a quieter spot and I'll tell you a little bit more about Watsaket. The story goes in 1820 there was a massive cholera problem and there were a lot of dead bodies and this is the area where they were that came the monks would uh, prepare them and, and, and prepare them for cremation or burial. Uh, now the problem is that the cholera was racking up so many deaths that the bodies just kept piling up higher and higher and there was delay in some of the, uh, the burial activities so therefore the vultures were attracted to the meat, so this uh, area here became known as uh, Vulture Temple or Vulture Mountain because there were so many vultures here uh, dining on the rotting corpses that were in this uh, on this mountain here. So when you come to Doi Saket, Doi, um, so when you come to Watsaket, be sure to have a look at the vulture display. It's quite harrowing. See so with a graphic image of the rot. The, the body there with its guts all open and the vultures are pecking on it. What a grisly sight. Let me tell you about Watsaket. Watsaket is the only hill in all of Bangkok. And this temple dates way back to the Ayutthaya period. It was originally called Watsake, but King Rama number one changed it to the Watsaket, changed the name of it to Watsaket. So when King Rama one declared that Bangkok was to be the capital, that was the time when King Rama one decided to renovate this temple and change its name to Watsaket. Watsaket, interestingly enough, translates to washing of hair. The concept or was where this name came from was basically that when the king went off to battle, went off to war, it was in this area here where he, he stopped to wash his body and wash his hair before he returned back to the actual, uh, to the king, uh, to the kingdom, to the royal palace. So this was the area where he used to wash his hair. Joyce, that's why it's called Watsaket. Now it was King Rama I's grandson, that's King Rama III, who is known as the Temple Builder, decided to renovate and make this huge mound. So it was King Rama III, the, who's nicknamed the Temple Builder, who decided to build a massive chedi here. Now he had a lot of soil uh, trucked into the place. Well, not on trucks, but you know, I think you know what I mean. A lot sent into this place to build this huge kind of a chedi structure, but on, a, on, on some kind of like an artificial mountain. Now he built it with very soft sand, uh, soft soil, sandy kind of soil, so it actually did collapse. 
um, so it wouldn't, couldn't support the weight of the chetty. So this was this this collapsed, and then it was just basically abandoned. So it actually became overgrown with a lot of weeds and vegetation. So much so that the locals actually thought it was a natural hill and not actually a man-made hill. So after decades of being an abandoned kind of a man-made hill, it was King Rama IV. No, sorry, yeah, King Rama IV who decided to. Uh, actually build a chedi, some kind of a chedi on top of this mountain. But it, it wasn't complete, completed actually until King Rama V. Now it was, um, in this area here, there was, it was a, a law at the time which uh, wouldn't allow any cremations of bodies within the city centre. So therefore all the dead bodies had to actually be brought to this place for cremation. So this became known as actually a uh, ghost temple. King Rama III was very well versed in the in government affairs and in particular trade. He was also very wary that the problem with in, that of international trade could actually present. So he's very very careful when dealing with uh, foreign foreign country, uh, other other countries. But he also was very shrewd to collect a lot of tax when he indeed did there was trade with other countries, and he actually amassed a fortune. Um, through these taxes, but also built a lot of good business relations and was very well respected by the people who worked close by because he was very shrewd with his money with business, and with business dealings. He actually got the nickname the trading boss. He also showed particular generosity as well. Not only with the people with royal rank, but with common people as well. King Rama III was, in, was particularly fond of education and anyone showed, who showed a little bit of promise uh, with academics, he would support them and help them get more education. He, he, he greatly valued education. It was King Rama III who actually made Wat Chetapan the centre of knowledge and learning. So it was King Rama III who cleverly nav navigated the time when the colonial powers were taking charge of neighbouring countries. Uh, he believed that he needed to have like uh, to learn from the Westerners, but not to become uh, blind followers of the Western ways. So he, he skillfully navigated uh, Siam and Thailand through the period that so it actually did not become colonised. So remarkably, during this time, Thailand has always remained a free and independent country. Now the next stop. Finished here learning about Wat Saket and learning, learning more about King Rama III. I'm now going to head to Wat Sampang. Now, from what I understand, Wat Sampang has some connect, connection with the Sampen Market in Chinatown. So, I'm going to get on my bike, head down there, and see what I can learn about Wat Sampang. <laughs>